nature sends them into the world scentless. It will take this youngster days to develop the fragrance so welcome to hunters. Chololo can sense opportunity, and he's not alone. Every predator out here knows there's young game afoot, but who will find it first? The lack of scent is a great thing for the fawns. Combined with their ability to lie still in tall grass, it keeps many of them alive, but the predators seldom give up. Searching for mother's milk, a fawn breaks the spell. Their reunion draws the attention of a hyena. <laughs> Hyenas have the stamina to chase prey until it drops, provided they can keep their target in sight. Something has galvanized the herd, and the predators sense it. The hyena tracks the herd. But Chololo takes a different angle. It's a lone female. Perhaps there's a fawn to be found. Sensing Chololo's on to something, the hyena heads his way. But Chololo's nose keeps him one step ahead, leading him on, until he runs into beauty with a kill. To protect her meal, beauty goes aloft. <laughs> The hyena lingers, unwilling to concede defeat. That is, until Chololo has had enough of his presence. After Beauty has cashed her kill, Chololo follows her into the bush. She may be ready to mate. What's surprising about Chololo is that he'll go far out of his way to track down a female and then ignore her, even when she's thrashing around right in front of him. This can go on for days. Maybe he can sense when the time's not right to mate yet. In fact, neither leopard is quite ready to expend the energy needed for mating. Chololo sets off on his solitary path, leaving Beauty 
to lull. All too soon, he reacquires his standard accompaniment. After a while, tired of the hyena's hectoring, he settles down for a rest. Across Africa, bushfires shape the ecology. In Malamala, blazes like these help maintain the balance between grassland and shrub that produces this perfect leopard habitat. The amazing thing about this scene is the absolute lack of concern among the animals for the fire. I'd always been told that if you want to keep animals away, you make a fire. And that's true, if there's a big roaring blaze headed for the animals, they'll go into a frenzy. But if a fire is just burning along, it becomes part of the landscape, and no one much cares about it. A series of moist summers has left the bush very dense. Dead grass has built up, premium tinder, primed to burn fiercely. Conflagrations like this can last for weeks, flaring when daytime winds fan the embers and fading at night. For leopards like Chilolo, a fire is an inconvenience. It burns away his scent marks, so he has to patrol that much harder. On the other hand, with the cover burned away and the dry leaf litter gone, he can find and hunt down his prey more easily. As he calmly patrols this hellish landscape, Chololo has heat of a different sort in mind. He's about to achieve another stripe of adulthood. Mating time has come. Once they get going, they'll be at it for four, five, even six days. Chilolo keeps moving through his territory, and the female follows him, even when they leave her territory. The entire region is their honeymoon suite. They'll mate, wander, mate again, oblivious to the changing scene. Beauty and Chololo dally near an impala herd, but they're not interested in hunting. unnerve the antelope. When the herd can contain the tension no more, impala scatter every which way. Some run so close to beauty and Chololo, they trigger the predatory instinct.
by chance, the two latch onto the same luckless Impala. I'd never seen this sort of collaboration before. Normally he'd chase her off, but maybe he's more tolerant because they're mating. But as quickly as Chololo and Beauty collaborated, they're competing again. In a show of strength, he overpowers his consort. Next day, as their mating marathon nears its end, Chololo begins to pull away from beauty. He's drawn back into the isolated existence he usually leads. Even ensuring the survival of the species doesn't exempt him from the work required to preserve his place as the main leopard in this corner of Mala Mala. Though singed and smoky, Chololo's world remains vibrant, and he sets about reminding its inhabitants who's boss. It seems a neighboring male was all set to annex a portion of Chololo's turf. But that plan was hatched with Chololo away. Now he's back. At the point where two leopards' territories meet, there's a sort of fixed line, and then there are these overlapping zones that both cats wander in and out of. They probe and test constantly, trying to see how far they can push things, until the other guy says, back off. One thing is clear. This is Chololo's territory, and none of it will be ceded without a fight. Rising over Mala Mala, life goes on in all its murderous splendor. The killing takes place at a killing pace, with Chololo in the thick of it. Now, when he brings down an impala, and hyenas make off with the kill, he doesn't give up. Instead, he takes advantage of the herd's confusion and attacks again, immediately. 